Hi, George here. We're going to be improving this image right here, doing a Photoshop Elements background blur trick and make it look just like that. So we're going to be increasing the blur in the background and increasing the contrast in our foreground image. Now to start this off, we need to get the original photograph, which is this one right here. I'm going to close this down. I'm not going to bother saving that. And let's go over to Pixabay and download this image. And it's right here. I'll put this link in the description so you can just go right to this page to download. Go over to the download button over here. And you want the one that is 1920 by 1280. That's the size I'm using. This is basically six by four inches in Photoshop Elements. Go ahead, click on download, and then save that to a location on your hard drive. Okay, let's now just get this out of the way. And then going up here to file and open, navigate to the folder where you downloaded that image. And then put it right here, and it's that picture there. There we go. Choose open. And here's the original image. Okay, the first thing we need to do is to make a duplicate of this whole image. That's a safety, but we'll also be using that duplicated layer. Over here where it says background, right click on the name and choose duplicate layer and okay. There we go. You can then hide that background. That's a safety. In case things get messed up, we can always go back to our safety. We shouldn't have that problem though in this particular video. We now need to separate out this girl from the background, basically making a copy of her and putting her onto a new layer. And for that, Go to the lasso tool, just a regular lasso tool. I have a real small feathering on this one, just a two pixel feathering. Just helps you soften out the edge a little bit, which is perfect for this particular image. Then starting any place, we want to draw a line, make a selection right around the girl. It doesn't need to be up against the edge. You can be just a little ways out like this. That's perfectly fine. You can go off the bottom. That'll just be flat across the bottom and then up around this side here. There we go. Again, doesn't need to be perfect and back and cross over your beginning. There we go, here's our basic selection. I'll now zoom in on this a little bit, grab the zoom tool here and zoom in a bit like that. Let's go back to our selection tool, then click on the refine edge button. I normally like working with this red background that's over here under view mode, put it right here. And that's the overlay right there. It just makes it really easy to see where you're working. And this tool here, this is the refine radius tool. Now way down here in the tools panel, tools option panel, there's your size, 35 pixels. And that's good for this image. You can see right there, that size is just fine. I'll leave all of these at the defaults. Nothing special about this. And then just come in here, starting over in the red area, come in and then brush in. And I'll normally do just a couple of passes like that, and then just in a bit further, and brush in against the image. Now again, because we're putting this image back on itself, we don't have to be really critical about this. Now hold the space bar down. That changes this into a hand. You can then push this image up and let go and then continue on down. There we go, just little brushes. I found that this works best if you do it in just little bits like this, little movements. Let go and let it think about that and make that adjustment and then work around. Don't try to do the whole thing in one big pass. This is a lot more efficient and does a better job. And again, space bar, and I'll pull her down here and get the top part in. I'm coming just a little ways into the hair, but not much, about that far, you can see that, there we go. Okay, up and around to the top of the head up here. And down to this side. And that finishes off that pass, looks good. Then come down here into the refine edge where it says selection. Change this to new layer with layer mask and choose OK. It has copied her from the background layer and placed her onto a separate new layer up here with just that background hidden. OK, let's go back to our zoom tool. Click on fit screen. I'll come back to our background copy here. Now is where that is going to be coming into play. I'm going to be making the background a bit more blurry than this. This is not quite blurry enough for a good background. You're still seeing enough detail back here that the eye is drawn in and takes a look at that background to see what it is. So it looks like you're having a hard time seeing, but it's not blurry enough to ignore it. So you want to take this just a bit further. And for that, go up here to the filter menu, come down to blur, and you want the Gaussian blur. And here's no blur on that. It's already a bit blurry, but it's not blurry enough. Here's clear to the top super blurry. It just kind of goes away. We want something right down around here. I'm thinking between 10 and 12 looks pretty good. So we can type it in if you want to. There's 10. 
that's good enough. You see, it's blurry enough that you begin to ignore it at this point. You're not really looking for any detail back there because there's really no detail to be seen. Then it helps her to pop out from the background. So I'll leave that at 10. Choose OK. So our background blur is good. And now I want to increase the contrast of the foreground figure. For that, let's go back up here to her layer. There we are. And then go up to the Layer menu, come down to New Adjustment Layer, and Levels. The reason why I'm doing this instead of going over here to Enhance and Lighting and Levels here is if I do it this way, it's going to be a permanent setting. You put it in and you're done. You can't change it. If you go over here to the Layer menu and use the Adjustment Layer and then Levels here, I can go back and change this in the future. I'll demonstrate that in just a second. Click on Levels. Where it says Use Previous Layer, check that. Choose OK. Here's our Levels Control. And what I want is more contrast. And you do that by taking the left hand side, this is your darks, and moving this in a little bit. That makes her darks darker. Don't go too far, they block up like that. Just bring them in a bit. You can kind of see in here where the actual dark part of the image is beginning. Bring it into close to that. Same thing on the right hand side. This is the light parts of the image. You can see where they're beginning to happen right in here. Bring the white pointer into about that position. And that gives you a nice, more contrasty image. Basically, I want to have a nice pure black in there someplace and a nice pure white in there someplace. And that does that for us. And there's our improved contrast. Now, so that you can come back and change this, and this is where you can do that. Once you've closed that down, if you want to make any changes, go back up here, double click on the icon right here, and that brings your control back up again. And you can then change that if you're not happy with it. That's something that you cannot do if you use the Enhance menu. I try to stay away from the Enhance menu as much as possible and instead use these adjustment layers because it gives you that opportunity to make changes in the future. And you may want to do that. Now that we're here, let's do a little bit more vibrancy, a little bit more saturation to our colors. Come down here to Hue Saturation. Again, check that checkbox, choose OK. Our control here changes. We have a new adjustment layer up here for saturation. I want just a bit more saturation here. It's the middle control. Pull that up just a little bit. You don't need much, just a touch. You can see how it looks by showing our highlight with the eye right here. There's before, there's after. It's just a little adjustment, a little more color in there. And if the background looks too wishy-washy for you, if you want to have a darker, that's easy to fix. Come down to your background, copy layer right here. And we'll do an adjustment layer over here. And that's layer. Come down to new adjustment layer and levels again. Check that checkbox, choose OK. What that checkbox does is it makes the adjustment only apply to the layer right beneath it. So we can have different adjustments for these two different layers. And in here, if you want it a bit less wishy-washy, just take this left control, pull that in, and that will darken down the darks in the background. There we go. And it makes a real nice blend on your whole image. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe. It's the subscribers that help this channel continue to grow and I'll be able to do more videos in here. So if you want to help out my channel, help me continue to make videos over here, take a look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It's a great way to learn how to use this program, and I'll put a link for that in the description. And I'll see you next time.